Hey there. Welcome to the video and today we'll be discussing how npm resolves dependency hell. Now this is a must know for anyone who's using third party npm libraries or even private packages as dependencies inside their projects. Now let me first tell you what dependency hell actually means. So as you see on the screen right now there's a new project whose primary dependencies are packages by the name of package A and package B. Now primary dependencies are the ones that you directly install by running the npm install command. Now each of these primary dependencies may or may not have further secondary dependencies. Let me show you a better visual representation. So here I am on a website which generates a graph diagram for an npm package where each of the nodes represents a dependency. So for example Redux is a very lightweight library and it only has one secondary dependency Babel runtime which in turn has another dependency called generator runtime. But if we take an example of a more heavyweight library for example Express. So as you can see here Express has a lot of direct dependencies and these direct dependencies also have further secondary dependencies. Now coming back to our simple example a dependency hell can arise when both of these packages A and B have a secondary dependency called package C. But if you notice package A is dependent on the major version 1 while package B is dependent on major version 2 of package C. Now the question here arises what does npm do in such a case. So for example you run these two commands npm install package A and npm install package B. So would npm install both of the packages separately? Or will it override the major version 1 by major version 2? Hence in such a scenario if only let's say the version 2 of package C exists then the APIs of package A will start throwing an error. So here in this video we'll be seeing exactly how npm manages this dependency hell by starting a new npm project. So here in the terminal I'll be making a new directory called dependency hell. We'll be moving inside the particular directory and then we'll be starting a new npm project by using npm init command and we'll give the flag y which will generate the default package.json for us. And now let's open our project on VS code. So as you can see here our project tree currently only has the default package.json file. So let's open the terminal and we'll go ahead and install our first dependency which will be express. So I'll say npm install express and once it finishes you'll notice that under our dependencies section version 4.18 of express was installed and the most important thing that we want to see here is how the node modules folder is structured. So here under node modules you'll see that express is there but npm also installed all of these other node modules which we directly did not mention. And these are nothing but the secondary dependencies that I just showed you here in this graph. So one thing that becomes very clear is that the node modules folder follows a flat structure for installing packages. Now if I type npm-v it will show me that I'm running the npm version 6.14. Now this flat structure is something that was introduced in the npm version 3. Before npm version 3 each of your dependency had its own node modules folder inside its own directory. So what you're seeing right now all of these additional directories would have actually been there as a part of node modules under the folder express itself. But since version 3 npm doesn't do that it follows a flat structure. So now that we know that npm follows a flat structure we can maybe restructure our diagram like this. So we can say that when we run the command npm install package A what npm would do is in the node modules folder it will install the package C version 1 because it is a secondary dependency for our package A. But when we run the next command npm install package B what happens then? Will npm continue to follow the same flat structure and install package C within the same node modules folder or will it uninstall the version 1 of package C and will maintain only the latest version of package C which is version 2 which again will render our package A useless. So next up in our project we'll install a few more dependencies. Lodash is a very popular library. As you can see it has 45 million downloads weekly and there are almost 155,000 npm packages which are using Lodash as a dependency. So what we'll do here is we'll go to the versions tab of Lodash 
and we'll install some old major version. For our example, let's install Lodash version 3.6.0. So here in our terminal, I'll write the command npm install Lodash at and I'll mention the version that we'll be installing, which is 3.6. And as you can see, our dependencies now has an additional key value pair for Lodash. And just in case, if you guys are not aware of how the versioning system works, NPM packages follow the semantic versioning where the first number denotes the major version, the second number denotes the minor version, and the last one is usually for any bug fix or patches that were introduced to the minor version. So the version of Lodash that we just installed is major version 3, minor version 6, and there is no patch release. Now if we look for Lodash under our node modules, let's just scroll a little bit down here, you'll see that Lodash is installed. And if you open the package.json file of the Lodash installation, you'll see that version 3.6.0 is actually installed in our systems. So let's say now I installed the library Babel Core. So if I click on the official NPM page for Babel Core, you'll see under the dependency section, Lodash is mentioned. So in our terminal here, I'll say npm install Babel Core. Now if I go to the actual GitHub repository for the Babel Core library, you'll notice that in the package.json, the version of Lodash is 4.17. But in our system, 3.6 already exists. So we are now at the similar situation that we mentioned here in our diagram. Here if we ran the npm install package a command first, then we know that npm will follow the flat structure and will install the dependency package c with version 1 into our node modules directory. How will npm store the second major version of package c? And to see the behavior, all we need to do is find the babel core folder under node modules. And this time you'll notice that there is an additional node modules folder inside the babel core directory itself. And it has only a single dependency called lodash. And if you see its package.json file, it will mention that its version is 4.17. So we can now go ahead and update our diagram to show something like this. So in this case, whichever library you installed in the second command, when we ran package b, which requires another major version of package c, that package will be installed under the node modules of package b itself. Let's go ahead and change the color of package a since now it's perfectly working. So this is how npm manages dependency help. It falls back to the older pattern of installing secondary packages. Whenever it notices a conflict in the major version for the same package, creates a new node modules folder and installs the second version inside it. So in our project, you can also see the dependency tree by just running the npm ls command. Here I'll mention the depth as one. Keeping the depth as one will only show me the first level of secondary dependencies. So if I run this particular command, you'll notice that on the first level of installation, we have down here our Lodash version 3.6, which is present there in the actual package.json of our project. But if you scroll up to the Babel core dependency tree, you'll notice that under Babel core, your Lodash 4.17 is also present. So here the version 4.17 of Lodash present under the node modules of Babel core itself. Now to expand on our example, we'll be adding two more primary dependencies, package M, which needs package C at version one and package N, which needs package C at version two. So when we do npm install package M, since version one of C is already there in the flat structure, there will be no additional installation needed. But since package n needs version 2 and version 2 is not present in the flat folder structure of our project's node modules, it will again create a copy of package c under its own node modules folder. Now since it's pretty evident that there will be redundant installations of the same major version of a given package, most of these popular libraries make sure that they're running the latest version of Lodash so that there are no such redundant installations in any given project. So I really hope this video helped you guys in understanding how the NPM package manager installs all the dependencies and how it manages dependency hell, which can arise due to conflicting major versions. So next time, whenever you're installing an NPM package, please be very careful about what major version you're installing in your project. If this video helped you, hit on the like button and subscribe to the channel because I post new such videos every week. 
that's it for today and i'll see you guys in the next one